Okay, so thanks for those of you tuning in. This is lesson 19, and we're looking at collision detection. So up to this point, we've learned about sprites, we've learned about moving sprites and animating sprites. Uh, we've also learned about uh, velocity uh, last time. So now we look at what happens when sprites hit each other or hit other things. How are we going to have them act and respond to uh, those collisions? So. In order to do that, we first need to be able to tell that there's been a collision. So hence the reason for this collision detection um, lesson that we're gonna be going over today. So the question of the day here in lesson number 19, how can programming help make complicated problems more simple? In this lesson, the class learns about collision detection on the computer, working in pairs to explore how a computer could use math along with the sprite location and size properties to detect whether two sprites are touching. They then use the is touching block to create different effects when sprites collide and practice using the block to model various interactions. So we're looking at something today called an abstraction, which is a simplified representation of something more complex. Abstractions allow you to hide details, to help you manage complexity, focus on relevant concepts, and reason about problems at a higher level. So, quick example, where have we seen this before? Where did we just see an example of an abstraction? Kale. The velocity block that we just learned about, okay? We took the counter pattern, uh, the sprite.x equals sprite.x plus one, and we changed it instead to just say um, sprite velocity x equals one. So it, it's one command, it's sort of simpler. You're gonna see how um, this under the hood stuff and this abstraction is really, really nice with um, how we're gonna do this today because calculating um, collisions and is touching is a really complicated command if you didn't have the sprite that is touching block or command. We also have the sprite that debug, uh, which we're going to be able to look at today. Um, so that's what we're uh, going to be doing through these lessons. So run the program to see the robot bring the bunny dinner. When the bunny reaches the bowl, they both stop walking and the bowl becomes empty. What code do you think would help the computer know if two sprites were touching? So here we go. Everybody see that? Wasn't that fascinating? We need to see it again. Okay, so robot has food in the bowl. Bunny's coming, robot's coming. They hit each other, they stop, and the food disappears. Okay, what could we do in order to have this happen? What do you know of already that we could do this? What code? Patton? Right, an if statement, we need a conditional. And up to this point right now, the only way we can tell this is if they reach the same point. So we just say, if bunny reaches um, this X, and if the robot reaches this X, then we're gonna have them stop. So we would have to have two different if statements for each of the two. Um, and then we'd also have to add an additional if statement. Um, well, actually, no, we wouldn't. We would just, when the robot reaches that point, we would stop the robot and we would empty the bowl. So, there we go. All right, so computers use math to figure out whether two things are touching. Look at the math on lines 17 through 18 of this program to see how the sprite properties are compared with their width to see whether they are touching. Um, so you're going to read the if statements inside the draw loop and find the different sprite properties and how they're compared. Discuss the code with your partner. Why does the code only use the width and x properties, not the height and y properties? 
would you want to write this code every time you check whether something was touching? So here is the stuff. So line, I thought they said, oh yeah, 17, 18. Okay, so there's the code. Discuss with your partner, why only use X and width? Why not height and Y? So I'm gonna pause the recording. Everybody consider that um, question and discuss the answer. Okay, so now that you've discussed it with your, your partner or whoever you're discussing things with at home on your own as a distance learner, um, looking at this code, we kind of decided that uh, it's only moving from side to side. And so that's the reason why it's only using the X and the Y. So it is only moving in one direction, hence the reason why we don't care about the Y uh, property. Uh, we also don't want to code this all the time. Uh, we'll take the simple uh, is touching. block thanks uh, so what this is doing is it's looking at the bunny x and the dinner x and it's saying that if the bunny x is greater than the dinner x and the bunny x minus the dinner x is less than bunny dot width divided by two plus dinner dot width divided by two or the bunny x is less than the dinner x and the bunny x minus dinner x is greater than negative bunny width divided by two plus dinner width divided by two, then they're touching. So that's essentially what it's doing. It's just comparing the locations of the two and seeing if the x for the bunny and x for the dinner are at such that they are um, a width apart. So they're looking at the width of the um why are they doing half the width why don't they look at the whole width max yeah exactly we're looking at the edge we're not looking at the whole thing so we're looking at the edge of the robot and um we're the middle of the robot to here which is that's where our x is so from the x to the edge that's half the width and then from the X, which is the middle, to the edge is once again half the width. So that's why they're looking at um, those two measurements there. So hopefully that gives you some ideas as to um, how this is supposed to work. And you can write something intelligent down to answer those questions. But basically what they're trying to tell you to do, what they're trying to tell you is, we're taking out a whole lot of coding here and it's good that we don't have to do this manually on our own. So writing out the math each time, you wanna check whether two sprites are touching can take a while. And think as well if you're moving in more than one direction. Think of all the code you would have to have then because you have to compare the X's with all the code that we just saw. And you have to compare the Y's with um, additional code as well. So a programmer created the is touching block, which can check whether one sprite is touching another sprite or the target. The computer is still doing the same math in the previous program, but you don't have to worry about it because another programmer already did that work. So inside the draw loop, drag the is touching block into the if block, and um, you gotta make sure to see if the bunny is touching the dinner. So on here, it's not gonna actually run because I've left the parameter empty. So you have to have the um, sprite that is touching. So right here, we're going to say, Bunny is touching uh, dinner. 
Does it matter which one is the sprite and which one's the target? Not really. And then it's, it's the same thing. So it will matter when you're doing some other interactions. But if all you're doing is trying to figure out if they're touching, it doesn't matter which one's the target and which one's the sprite. OK? So let's see here. This goes up to nine. We'll do five, then we'll do six, and you can do the rest. All right, so we got an apple. Apple's falling down, and the blender it needs to blend up the apple. Uh, notice that once the apple um, gets past the blender, it's still falling. It doesn't actually stop. It just goes all the way through the blender. Um, so the blender should only turn on when the apple touches it. So right now, it's going the whole time. So what do I need in order to make sure that it only turns on when the apple touches it, Annabelle. I need a conditional because it's a condition. It only should be running when a certain thing happens. So we're going to go to control and we're going to say, here's where shake the blender is happening. So I only want the blender to shake when uh, the apple's touching. So we put the blender shaking inside of my if statement. And then I'm gonna just say, if the apple is touching the blender, then I'm gonna have the blender shake. So ugh, drag this on over. So we say, if apple is touching blender, then I run it. And here comes my apple, blender's not moving, blender's moving, blender stops moving, okay? And just for kicks, just to show you that it doesn't really matter, if Blender is touching Apple, then it's going to do the same exact thing. Woo! -hoo! Was that that hard? Nope. All right, last one. All right, debugging collisions. Oh, this is the tough one. This is when you start le learning about the debug block. So here's what's happening. When I run this and I move the pin, did I touch the balloon? No, I didn't touch the balloon, but I touched what's called the hit area for the balloon. So if I look at the animation here, Look at my balloon. See how big this is here? All of this is considered part of the sprite. And so once the tack gets to this part of the square, it registers that you have hit the balloon. And so that's what they're trying to point out here. So what you need to do in the code below is change debug balloon, balloon.debug equals false to balloon.debug equals true and add a new debug code to the code and set the track sprite debug property to true. And then um, we're supposed to run again, actually, even though I already pointed out to you, say true. Okay, see, there's my problem. And then when I do a tack.debug uh, equals true, and that actually should go down here after I make it, and I just need to spell true, right? Okay. So, as hopefully you guys can see, once my tack hits that line right there, it registers that it pops. Okay. And that's all you're going to do for this one. Any questions so far? This is just um, collision detection. We're gonna do some other forms of collision um, in the next lesson, but hopefully this one isn't too bad for you to be able to get through this period. Um, a reminder as well, there's still a lot of blanks in many of the assignments. Um, so if you do end up finishing this before the end of the class period, I would encourage you to go back and make sure all of your other lessons are um, taken care of um, as well. I haven't done any grading for you guys for a little while, 
but I hope to be able to do some grading uh, tomorrow, and definitely I'll be doing a bunch of grading on Friday. Okay, get to work.